Happy Saturday, risers. We hope you're having a phenomenal weekend. Of course, the state of the economy has all of us concerns. I'm back with interviews that we've done with some notable economists. This is over the past, actually, couple of weeks here on Rising. Sagar and I talked to Professor of Economics Stephanie Kelton, who debunked some common myths from the GOP caucus on stimulus spending. Let's hear what she had to say. So when consumer spending is constrained, and right now it's constrained largely by the virus and the fact that many people can't go back to work. Not only shouldn't they, but they can't go back to work. So you really have essentially one player left in the game who can provide the support that the economy needs, the spending that the economy needs, and that is the federal government. And yes, you know, there are, you're starting to hear people like Lindsey Graham, you mentioned say half of Republicans won't vote for it, starting to hear some grumbling about adding to the deficit and so forth. But the reality is, if someone doesn't do the spending, the economy will deteriorate further. And mm -hmm. what we need is a commitment from the federal government to continue to support this economy. And that means deficit spending. And that interview has only become more relevant, as we've seen now congressional negotiations completely stall out because of the GOP's commitment to this ideology of deficit hawkery and fear about the debt and the deficit. They're actually going against their own political interest and certainly going wildly against the interests and desires of the American people because they are so captured and so caught up in this zombie Reaganism ideology that Stephanie does such a great job of rebutting both with us on the show and also very much critically in her book. Um, we also spoke to economist Pavlina Cherneva, who explained why a federal jobs program could be essential to economic recovery. We just have to accept that this will be the responsibility and the task for the federal government to, to undertake. What would that look like? Um, mobilization, that was the requirement back in March. That is the requirement today. We still have problem with production of masks, equipment, of adequate testing. We will need to start creating jobs robustly and boldly. That means public investment programs. I would prefer to see very large infrastructure investment programs, programs very much akin to the New Deal to transition us back to normalcy, programs that guarantee employment to folks who need it. It is all well and good and absolutely necessary to provide income assistance, extend the unemployment insurance so that people do not uh, fall into absolute destitution. But there is going to be a light at the end of the tunnel, and we don't have a plan how to emerge out of uh, this pandemic without some plan for job creation. And I think the fastest way to do it is for the government to create the jobs directly. And I really think it's a failure of progressives and of you know the Sanders left and those who are holding leadership positions here that there hasn't been more serious discussion of direct federal jobs creation. Because what we've been watching unfold, of course, is that permanent job loss is accelerating. So right now we're in a crisis, right? We're just trying to like plug the holes, keep people together, and Congress is failing to even deal with that immediate crisis. But what Pavlina talks about there is the longer term trajectory of how do we make people whole in the long term? How do we get an economy back that's going to work for people? Not that it was working that well for people before in the long term. And so I thought that was a really important contribution to the conversation. And most recently, of course, we spoke to economist Dean Baker, who revealed how big pharma is cashing in on coronavirus vaccine research grants through patents. Here's how he broke it down. Now, the logic here, the justification is we have to give them a patent monopoly so that they could uh, have incentive to research drugs and to cover the risk because oftentimes they'll hit dead ends. Now, in the case of the coronavirus, there are no risks. We're paying them up front. I, I picked Moderna as my poster child here. We've given them over $900 million. Now, if at the end of the day, instead of having a great vaccine, they end up with something that doesn't work or has bad side effects, no risk to them. They got paid already. So the idea that we would pay them all this money up front, take all the risk ourselves, and then give them a patent monopoly so then they could charge us whatever they feel like, thats it's really kind of crazy. And when you hear all the, you know, obviously I'm in this camp, we're concerned about income inequality. Well, why on earth are we distributing, redistributing so much money from the rest of us to the drug companies? It's kind of mind boggling.
And make no mistake about it, this is standard operating procedure in terms of the U.S. government typically funds almost all of the public research that has led to new drug development. So there's this idea that big pharma's out there taking big risks and doing all this research. No, your tax dollars have backed that research that has created those new drugs. What they do is then just bring, bring it to the market and they get these patents that allow them to have an essential monopoly for years and years and years. So this giveaway on the COVID vaccine is just a microcosm of the way that the government props up big pharma year after year after year. Well, that does it for me. We will be back later today with the week that was in media screw-ups with Katie Halper. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Also, don't forget to like and share as well. Tomorrow, we'll be back for another round of Hashtag Rising Cues. We'll see you then.